Alrighty, so I just got done uh, doing some repair on this MSI RAM 4A board here. Uh, you can see a couple of the RAM chips up there have been socketed. And they're all 2102 chips and uh, two of them had a problem. One of them got, uh, got its own socket because I had identified it incorrectly. Uh, but uh, the two bad chips that I had on that board are now replaced. Um, you can also see I've got a Whamco MEM1 down there. That's an 8K board. So this machine has 12K of RAM installed, technically 13K, because this is an Altair 680. And the Altair 680 has 1K of RAM on board, and it doesn't use S100 bus cards. Well, how, how in the heck am I doing that, you might ask? Well, it just so happens that uh, this board right here, can't hardly see it, right there where it says 1680 extender. Uh, that was a board that was uh, developed by two gentlemen that uh, wanted to be able to add cheap RAM into their 680s. And uh, they published an article about that in Kilobod magazine, I believe it was. At least one of the guys who, who was involved with that project told me that. Um, and yeah, so I figured, uh, how about we, uh, we do a memory test on this guy? Um, so up here on the terminal, I've got it uh, blinking away there, but as you can see, the machine is halted. So let's go ahead and put the machine to run. And uh, you'll notice that I've got a period prompt up here now. Now I've got uh, 019. I have a uh, memory test program that came out of the back of the uh, 680 manual. And uh, it goes up to 0053, I believe. No, 5E. And so that is the program there. Now since the program itself and uh, the monitor use a lot of memory slots in that, uh, uh, let's just call it zero page, the first 256 bytes of memory, uh, as well as this program being in there, I'm not going to test anything inside of that area. Um, and I guess we're almost done with listing out the program here. The uh, 680 monitor is uh, kind of interesting. It's rather limited, but it does have automatic, uh, you know, it'll ask you if you want to replace that. So it automatically increments the, oops, I accidentally hit it in there. Uh, it automatically increments the, the memory address and gives you the option to change that. And so, and I'm just telling it to go to the next address. So we've gone past the end of the program there. That uh, 39 there before the two FFs is the te technically the end of the uh, the program. Um, so if I tell it to J0019, which is the start of the program, it asks me a question, and what it's asking me for is the starting memory address I want to test from. So I'll put 0100 because that's just right outside of that uh, first page of memory. And I will throw this guy down onto the desk so you can watch it at work once I do this. So now I'm going to type in my final address. I've got 2K or 12K of RAM in here, so my final address is 2FFF, and it begins doing its memory test. If it has any problems at all with any slot of memory, it will print that out on the terminal telling me exactly which memory address had the problem. Uh, if it encounters no problem, then it just goes on and tests the next, uh, the next address. And so it's testing away. Now, the A0 address LED down here is non-functional. I haven't torn into the front panel yet to figure out why. It may just be a bad LED. Uh, it may be a bad channel on whatever is driving that or the latch that's bringing that information to the front panel. Like I said, I haven't dug into that yet, but that'll be the next thing. My first thing was to get the machine operational. Uh, when this machine first came to me, uh, it did power up, um, but it wouldn't run. 
Uh, and after looking at it a little bit, I noticed that the uh, the power output from the 7805 regulator on the uh, inside board was like 4.8 volts, which it should never be. A 7805 should always put out 5 volts exactly. Uh, measured the input, and it was you know 10.9 volts, which seemed a little low, but it, it could have worked. Uh, switched over onto AC and uh, uh, on my meter and noticed that there was about five and a half volts worth of ripple there. Replaced the filter cap for the uh, uh, what should be the plus eight voltage line um, for the S100 bus and the entire problem went away uh, anyway. So once that was done I started doing my memory tests. I found out that the Wamco board was fine but the inside board had uh, a couple of problems with the bits. Um, and uh, yeah, that led to me replacing a bunch of chips. So here we are, almost done. Uh, one more little cycle here, and pink. Okay. And if everything was successful, it doesn't tell us anything other than the prompt. And so there we have it. That's a uh, Altair 680 with a modified S100 bus adapter in it which lets you add cheap RAM to your 680. So that's technically that's a 13K machine um, and I can show that by rerunning the program here and we will tell it that we want to do, what is it, one... Where is that RAM? Uh, I had it written down somewhere. Oh, it was... Um, I think it was A0002. I think that's right. And there it goes, it's testing. It is done. problem. So what does it do if you if you have bad memory that it can't write and then compare the output of reading it back with what it thought it wrote to it? So we'll do J0019. It starts our program again. It's going to ask us for where we want to go. There's no RAM at 3000 to uh, 33FF and it just starts streaming out all these bad memory locations. And it's down here, and you can see instead of it cycling up through the addresses like what you saw whenever memory was good, it's jumping around so much to, to output all this data on the terminal that you don't even really see it addressing that. So it comes up and does all that stuff, and that'll take a very long time, so in order to make it stop, I'll hit reset, and that just takes us right back to the monitor prompt, and uh, we're good to go. Got to focus in one last time. And, uh, yeah. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye.